little bit of a thing for wallets and I always have ever since I was a young kid like my dad I remember he had this wallet it was a bifold wallet black leather he had it for probably the first 10 years of my life and I think he had it a few years before that I remember the coin pouch had this like little lanyard with a you know the patch that you get on leather stuff it had that attached to it still and everything I used to sit when I was any opportunity I could get play with my dad's wallet and look at the patina and just wish that I could have a wallet like that but being young you don't get really to have a wallet apart from one of those velcro fabric ones that's got maybe like a library card in it and then I remember when I was a little bit older probably about 11 or 12 my granddad got a new wallet for his birthday or something like that and he had this same wallet for years like probably since I was born and he always used to just sit in his chair and always have his wallet in his pocket back right all the time and I remember he gave this to me and one side was like heavily patinaed because it had like molded to his butt cheek from sitting on it for so many years and then the other side was starting to patina but it wasn't quite there you could just see that it got a bit more shiny and darker than what it was when he first got it and when he got this new wallet he gave me this wallet and I filled that up with everything I possibly could to make it look like how it was when he had it because I wanted to have like a man's wallet rather than a boy's wallet with like some coppers and maybe a five pound note and a couple of gift cards that I got for Christmas for bookshops that I'm never going to use because I don't read. So <laughs> since I was young, I've had a thing for wallets. And then when I started making my own money every so often, like now to this day, every six months, I get a new wallet, try it out, let the patina build, get a new one, use that for a bit, swap back. And I'm always changing wallets all the time. So they've been a very big part of my life for literally my entire life and what I want to talk to you about today is my three top wallets from 2022 leading into 2023 and then I've got a few plans for some wallets to try out this year that I will then share with you later in this year I had one delivered yesterday that I'm going to start using in a couple of weeks so stay tuned for an updated version of this video later this year when I've tried out some new ones <laughs> So wallets are a bit of a personal preference, really. Some people you get, they don't even care what wallet they have, as long as it carries their cash and their card. A lot of people now, like myself, have gone down the minimalist route, so just like a minimalist card holder or smaller wallet just to keep our cards in and sometimes a bit of cash. People like my dad, who still carry the bifold in the back pocket with enough receipts to fill a forest, gift cards that are out of date and have no money left on them, just sat on a mountain, you like this when you're talking to them, they're just all over the place. And then you've got people that don't care and just carry an elastic band around their cards. So everyone has their preference, but like I said, my personal preference, along with most people at the moment, is the front pocket minimalist sort of card holder. The three wallets I wanna to talk to you about today that were my favorite from last year leading into this year, all fall into that sort of front pocket minimalist card holder wallet category. They're all wallets that I've carried nonstop for at least six months at a time without switching out and there's one that I recently switched back to that I've had for about three years now that I always seem to find making its way back into my pocket. And that's the first one we're gonna talk about today. And that is the Nomad Card Wallet Plus. This is an absolutely great wallet. Nomad were kind enough to send this out to me a few years ago now, along with the matching phone case, which is long gone because I've had new phones since then, so obviously they're not gonna fit. But this has lasted and I use it a lot, like I said, it always seems to find a way back into its pocket. And that's because there is a lot of things that I really like about this wallet. One of them being the size, and that is consistent through all three of the wallets that we're talking about today. They're all about the same size. Perfect to just sit very discreetly in your front pocket and you forget that it's there, which is always good because you don't want it bulging out looking weird. Like you've got some weird big bulge in your trousers. You only want one of them. <laughs> The fact that it's very, very minimalist, like there's no fancy bells and whistles in it. As you can see, it's just straight up and down, bifold leather, put your cards in it. You can store some cash in there. In the back here, I tend to put cash in there if I'm putting cash in this wallet. Just sits in there behind that card. You can't put too much in there, two or three notes will do it. I love the fact that they've used hallween leather because that means that it patinas very well. Like as you can see on the inside, it's still fairly fresh like quite a light colored look and then on the outside you can see that it's pretty beaten nicely patinaed very dark because it's sat in my pocket it's been around the world with me it's done a lot so that is a very good thing because I love some patina I like how much you can carry in there so you've got enough space on the inside here 
for three cards here. You could probably double up in there. You've got space in here for a couple more cards, which I have got in there. I tend to keep my driving license here, just because it's nice, easy access all on its own. And then underneath where the driving license is, you've got space in there as well for more stuff. And then on the back, obviously, as you saw, there's like a quick access pocket, which I keep a credit card in and you can keep some cash in there. So I've got about eight cards in here right now and you could probably get 12 cards in here if you needed it. And it's still, as you can see, the profile of it is thin and it's not very big, like it's not much bigger than a card. Final part I wanna talk about about this wallet is the fact that you can see all your cards. So some wallets, like one that we're gonna talk about, they're all in one compartment. You have to take it out and you have to fan through your cards to find the one that you want and that can be a bit annoying. So that's what I like about this because everything is just there and you know exactly which card you're pulling out at which time. On to the next one. So the next one I wanna talk about is another bifold from a company called Andar. This is the Andar Apollo. I've been using this recently. I only just switched back to that Nomad wallet. I was using this for about four months, straight up, and I did actually really enjoy it. And there's a lot of things I do like about this, but there's also a lot of things that I don't quite like about it. So again, just like the Nomad wallet, the size of it, it's it's a nice small size, like literally the same size as the Nomad wallet, which is a very good thing, because again, it just sits nice and discreet in your pocket. The next thing is a bifold. I'm a big fan of a bifold. That's why I like the Nomad so much. I'm not sure what it is. I think it's just, again, from my childhood, my granddad and my dad used bifolds, so I always liked that motion of opening a wallet and taking stuff out. So that's a big upside for me. The build quality of this wallet is amazing it's really solid which is also one of its downsides one thing i don't like about it is how tough it feels like it's very hard and that's good because it's not going to break but it's also bad because you want a nice soft level wallet to have in your pocket i've tried to break it in and make it softer but i've carried it for months and it doesn't seem to get any softer which is a bit of a drawback in my personal opinion one amazing thing about this is its ease of use you've got a quick draw pocket on the front can store a card in on the inside is an id slot and then up here you've got two parts for just two commonly used cards i guess and then in the back you can see this little pull tab if you pull that cards on the inside there just pop out and quick access to the less frequently used cards which is really handy because it keeps stuff out of the way you can carry quite a lot in here like i said you've got option for two cards here you could probably stick four in there one on the front for quick access, ID under my hand. In this back bit, I think I've had like six cards in there before. Right now there's three. I just switched it over from the other wallet, but there's three in there right now. I've had six in there with the rest of the stuff as well. And it holds it very, very well. Things I don't like about this wallet, like I said, the build quality is questionable for me. It's a bit too tough. As you can see, it's kind of a weird shape at the top. And I'll explain why that is in a minute. But I feel like it just needs to be more squared off because it just feels a bit weird. I'm not sure what lever they used in this, but it doesn't patina. It seems to have been exactly the same since I got it, which isn't a big deal, but for someone that likes patina like me, I want some patina. This is this should just stayed the same since I got it, which I don't like. And the last thing is there is an option for a money clip in this. Without the money clip, you can't carry cash in it. With the money clip, you can, but it's designed for dollars, not pounds. And I live in England, so Pounds are thicker than dollars. Like a £10 note and a £5 note, you can kind of get away with. But if you've got a 20 or a 50, it just sticks out of the top, which isn't ideal. But I like the fact that you get the option for this money clip. Nice and easy. It literally just goes up on the inside of the wallet. In here, there's a hole specifically made for it. And then when it's in there, you get the option to put some money in there, which is really handy. And that's why it's this weird shape, but I still feel like they could have made it more squared off and symmetrical. That could just be me being OCD. So I do like the fact that they have that option and it's helpful for when I am in America because I keep cash when I'm in America so I can just keep it in this clip, in this wallet if I'm using this. If I'm in England, I can't, can't carry cash in it, which sucks. But all in all, this is a very good wallet. I did enjoy using it for the time that I was using it. This is the one that I was using when I did my latest everyday carry video a couple of weeks ago. I'll link that up here so you can watch that. I talk a bit more about this, but it is a great wallet. It's just not my favorite wallet. So onto the last wallet that I wanna to talk to you guys about today. 
This has been in no particular order, by the way, like from favorite to least favorite. And the last wallet that I want to talk to you about is the Grove Supply Co. Elm wallet. I think this is like a limited edition ghost or something like that, but it's the, the Elm wallet from Grove Supply Co. Mm. This is a great wallet, very minimalist, probably the most minimalist out of the three. And it's made by a leather maker on Instagram, like I said, Grove Supply Co. Josh is an absolute legend. He makes some amazing wallets, like really, really nice. I wanna buy every single one, but I can't afford to do that, so I'm not going to. <laughs> there is one that I wanna get soon though, and it's in the works, and that's his Stitchless wallet. I just haven't got on around to buying that yet, but that's one of the ones that I'm gonna be trying out this year. And I bought this one in his Black Friday sale in 2021 and we fell in love with it. It's such a nice wallet for so many different reasons. One, again, like the other two, is the size. It's a card size wallet, just to put your cards in. I love how minimalist it is. There's three pockets. You've got quick access on the front for a card, quick access on the back for some cash. I did have a Peter Pirate Life coin in here for a while. That's why you can see that it's round the patina to that. And then on the inside, you've got space for however many cards you can fit in there really. I've got one, two, three. I've got five in there right now. Again, just switched it out from the other wallets and it fits five perfectly. You could potentially get six in there and you could even swap the cash in the back for another card. So you could get about eight cards in this, I reckon, which is perfect for pretty much anyone. The build quality of this is absolutely amazing. Like the stitching has never moved at all. It's completely solid. It's got no issues, no damage at all. It's just patinaed very nicely. And I'll put a photo up of what this looked like when I first got it, which is why it's called the Ghost, because it came in a different color and then it patinas and that sort of white color came off to leave this nice looking color all over it. I love that. I love the whole watching this patina process, which was amazing. The lever that he used on this, and I'm assuming it's probably the same for the rest of his wallets as well, is so soft. Like. Normally when you get a wallet, you have to break it in a bit because the lever's quite tough. That was the same for the Nomad. Like I said about this, this is still tough. But this, as soon as I took it out of the box, it was just so soft, which I was like, he's good. <laughs> this man is good. So the lever on this is amazing. Smells insane. And I love the design of it. Like I said earlier, I'm a big fan of bifolds and stuff like that. But I really do like this minimalist, just card sleeve style made out of one piece of leather, quick access for the card that I use the most, cash in the back or another quick access card slot, and then the least used card, just go in here and you can take them out and fan through them and find the card that you want. I said earlier that I don't really like that, but sometimes I do, depends on the mood. So all in all, the Elm Wallet from Grow Supply Co. comes in at a joint first place for my top wallets of 2022, alongside the Nomad Card Wallet Plus, couldn't choose a favorite between the two of them. It just depends on my mood. And then in second place, there is the Andar Apollo, which is a great wallet. It just has its drawbacks. All of these wallets are absolutely fantastic. I think now I've got all my cards in here, I might actually switch back to this and use this for a little while again. I'm feeling it. It's gonna go right in the pocket right now. And on that note, that covers this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Do all the YouTube things, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you thought about this video. Let me know if you've used any of these wallets or if you've got any wallets that you might recommend for me that I can test out this year for another video like this at the end of this year so I can do my top 2023 wallets. So stick around, do all the stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. See you later.